Hello friends, this video on fractions part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now uh, we can also categorize fractions into different types. Like we have three different categories of fractions that we discuss about. Proper fractions, improper fractions and mixed fractions. Now you might be wondering what are they. So let us discuss each one of these one by one. So we'll start with proper fractions. So what do you mean by proper fractions? I mean what is so proper in these kind of fractions? Well these are those type of fractions where the numerator is less than the denominator. Like as we say, now why do we call them proper fractions? That is another interesting question. Now whenever we talk about fraction, what is fraction? Fraction is always part of a whole. That means how many parts out of the total number of parts. So when you think of this definition in the literal way, it seems as if the number of parts will always be lesser than the total number of parts like 1 by 3, 2 by 3, 2 by 5, 2 by 7. So now when you notice in each one of these, whether you talk about 2 by 3, 1 by 3, 1 by 5, 3 by 7, 1 by 19 and so on. So in each of these, these are like, you know, as per the literal definition of fractions. And in all of these, the numerator is lesser than the denominator. That is the term above is lesser than the term below. So these type of fractions are called proper fractions because they are like, you know, kind of properly aligned to the definition of the fraction. So when we talk about how many slices of the pizza did you eat? So you expect something like this, one slice out of five slices or two slices out of uh, five slices. So two by five, one by five, four by five, three by five. These are all examples of proper fractions because in all of these the numerator is lesser than the denominator. Now when you talk about the exact value of these proper fractions, you would see that the value of all the proper fractions are always less than 1. Why is it so? Now think about it in these lines. For example, let us take, let us consider 1 by 3. So where do you think 1 by 3 will be located on the number line? So to locate 1 by 3, you would divide each block into 3 parts like this and 1 by 3 would be located somewhere here. So 1 by 3 will be located before 1. That means somewhere between 0 and 1. Similarly, where will you locate 1 by 5? So again, in that case, you will divide this block into 5 equal parts. And again, 1 by 5 would be located somewhere here. So there also it is located between 0 and 1. Now you will observe that whenever you have the numerator lesser than the denominator, that fraction will always be located before 1. That's because the total number of divisions that you actually make is equal to the number is dependent on the denominator, right? Like in each of these cases, for example, here, how many divisions will you make? 3. Here, how many divisions will you make? 7. Here, how many divisions will you make? 19, right? And since the numerator is lesser than that, than the denominator, so obviously you will find the fraction somewhere before 1. For example, if, if let's say you want to uh, locate 1 by 19 on the number 9. So you will divide this particular block into 19 equal division. So obviously this point where 1 is located will be 19 by 19. And this value, so any value which is lesser than 19 by 19. That means any value where the numerator is less than 19 will lie between 0 and 1. That means all those fractions where the numerator is lesser than 19 will be less than 1. So 1 by 19 is also an example like that. So in all the fractions where the numerator is lesser than the denominator, the overall value of the fraction is always less than 1. So I hope that this logic is getting clear to you. So whenever you look at a fraction which is a proper fraction, that is the denominator is lesser than that is the numerator is lesser than the denominator. In all those cases, if you try to locate that fraction on number line, they will lie somewhere between 0 and 1 because their values are always less than 1. So even if you take examples like 16 by 20 or if you take examples like 100 by 101, all of these are examples of proper fractions. Thank you. 
Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.